Hello, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for AskGM.com and I will be analyzing the game between Neil and Tyler today and this is a London system so after the moves d4, knight f6, white plays bishop f4. The idea of the London system is very straightforward. White wants to put his pawns on e3 and c3 and create this very powerful pawn structure while not having his bishop stuck on c1. So let's see how black reacts. e6. Well, e6 is completely fine. So far, so good. e3. And black plays this move d5. d5 is definitely possible. Uh, as an alternative, I can recommend a variation that um, is published in my black book, Chess Openings for Black Explained, which you can actually, if you want to download it, online you can become a member of my website chessopeningsexplained.com here you get to play either c5 or b6 but let me show you just the brief idea uh, you want to basically put the bishop on the long diagonal usually white does this again you can start bishop e7 but at the right moment you're going to play c5 i will just finish development and here after the move c5 notice that you're not blocking and this is the very important point you're not blocking the dark square bishop on this diagonal. Later on, you can take on d4, play d6, knight bd7, rook e8, bishop f8, and try to break through with e5. And again, I don't want to go through a lot of details, but this is just an alternative way to play against the London system. Now, the only drawback of the move d5 is that you have to solve the problem of the light square bishop. After knight f3, I already think black makes a pretty serious mistake knight to c6. Why is that? Well, it's very difficult to play e5. That's the whole point behind the setup. If you can't play e5, your bishop is locked. And this is very important. Now, Fanchero and the bishop is not going to help you because it's going to be locked behind the knight on c6 and the pawn on d5. But the most important problem that I have with the move knight c6 is that it really stops black's flexibility in the center. The correct way to play here is c5, and after the move c3, you can simply play knight c6, for instance, bishop d3, bishop d6, black, white usually drops back, both sides castle, and here black has several good plans. You can simply play queen e7, b6, bishop b7, and make sure you keep an eye on these key central squares. Um, I can recommend the game Carlsen against Karyakin from a recent... Uh, Blitz tournament 2000, uh, I think 15 um, or 16. I don't remember when I was played, but it was relatively recent. Where actually Carlson lost with White here. Anyways, let's get back to the game. Knight c6 is an inaccuracy. Bishop b5. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that move. I don't actually like the plan that White executes by giving up the bishop pair. What I would prefer is for White to stick to the main idea to play c3. Bishop d3, castles, eventually knight goes to e5. This guy usually goes to d2 with a very simple, flexible attack and formation. So I don't like this bishop b5 move. I also don't like taking the knight. Giving up the bishop pair is typically a mistake when the pawn structure is undefined. Bishop takes castles. And here I like black's idea, bishop d6, knight e5. And black simply took the knight. I'm not sure if I would do it right away. I may be... A little bit hesitant to do that at first. This is a good move, hitting the rook, followed by castles, c5, and maybe later you can take the knight. Honestly, the knight is not going anywhere. But okay, you decided to take the knight, that's still fine. Queen e7, c3, and here black plays an interesting plan, queenside castle. It's a little bit unusual, but I don't think it's a mistake. White plays knight d2, rook g8, and black is getting ready to attack the king. So let's take a look. Both sides are going to be attacking each other's kings. Who is faster? That's the big question. Knight d7 is the right idea. Knight f3, f6. Bishop back, g5. I really love the way black's attack is going forward. f6, g5 are called tempo moves, meaning that white doesn't have time to start his own counterplay. Well, finally, white plays b4, but black immediately seizes a very nice opportunity to put the knight on a very nice outpost, knight c4. b5 is not going to do anything special. Bishop has two retreating squares. And now the game 
is about balanced, but it could get really sharp really quickly. So b5 bishop back, knight d2 blocking the knight from coming in, h5 excellent um, play by black. You don't want to stop and wait. The kings are on opposite sides. Whoever attacks first usually has the upper hand. f4, well that's a logical idea, at least white is trying to have an escape square for the bishop. But somehow it feels like black is attacking first. h4 is excellent move hitting the bishop. e5 blowing open the game is interesting as well, bringing this bishop into the action. a5, knight c4, takes, takes. Both sides are playing very good logical moves here. White tries to break through with b6, but black simply takes and plays a6. This is called the padlock idea. You don't want to move these pawns at all. When white plays b6, you're going to take and play a6, lock things up. Vice versa, if white plays a6, you play b6 and lock things up. It's called a padlock pattern. And there is really not much white can do about that. So good thing locking things up. And here comes the next very, very critical moment of the game. White plays the move queen d5 and black unaware of the threat simply takes on f4. This is a big mistake and could have lost the game on the spot due to a very beautiful tactic. So if you want to try to find this tactic, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure it out. And I'll give you a little hint. The king has no escape squares on the seventh rank. There's going to be some kind of a back rank problem. Yep, and the problem is rook takes a6, game over immediately. Absolutely no defense. If pawn takes, this is simply mate. And how are you going to stop rook a8 mate? You can do a spike check, right? Queen takes pawn, but we simply block. Still huge threat. So this could have been game over. White missed this opportunity. And that's probably why he ended up in a bad position later on. So queen takes on c4 only helps black. By the way, I should point out that instead of taking the pawn, bishop c6, pretty normal position. You know, white can go for the end game, but I think black has sufficient compensation there. So anyways, instead of this move, black should have played bishop c6. Now, I like the way pl black plays here. We have a much better bishop, the king is safe. We still have a massive pawn storm against white's king and the e-pawn is about to fall. So black simply goes to the end game. White's position is very much risky. h3 is an excellent idea to keep opening up the enemy king. And g4, again, I'm not a big fan of that move, but honestly, it's already hard to give white a good advice. Uh, black sees the opportunity to create a little double attack, won the pawn, and now all black has to do is have two pawns queen you have three against one so you need to create past pawns that's exactly what black does bishop f3 excellent move back rook g8 is excellent and now there is no stopping g4 g3 and the rest is sort of easy white tried to create something but you don't have enough firepower to really create mating nets black escapes and g3 check simply game over and black won quite nicely so what can I say about this game? Well, first of all, black player was not ready for the opening. Knight c6 is a big mistake. You should always leave the way for the c-pawn. If you want to learn more about this opening, once again, go to my website, chessopeningsexplained.com and download the PGNs. Everything is explained how to face the London system. I prefer the b6, bishop b7 idea, but d5, c5, Karya can play that way. It should be fine as well. White also made some serious mistakes. Bishop b5, bishop takes c6. Why give up such a beautiful light square bishop? And later on, there was a critical tactic that white missed. Spectacular rook sacrifice. Rook takes a6. So overall, great game and good luck to both players. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein from AskGM.com.